Hey guys, it's Carly from All the Pretty Books, and today we're going to talk about my signed book collection. So, I started off collecting signed Harry Potter books probably 10 11 years ago, and it's actually how I met Peter the Potter Collector. He's actually one of my really good friends in real life. Yeah. And I met him through a signed book on eBay, of all places. So when I first started collecting Harry Potter books, I wanted to collect things that were rare, unique, and hopefully signed. So that's what I did. I started buying up all the signed books that I could afford, and some of them I've kept, some of them I let, I've let go of over the years. The ones that I have now are the ones that most of them I've had for quite some time, and they mean something to me. They're quite special, um, since I've now migrated from just the rare books into the translations, which you see some of which behind me. I actually have about 650 plus books in my collection right now, um, and probably more. I just quit counting. So, the first signed Harry Potter book was actually signed in 1997, shortly after the book was published. She signed it for a uh, reporter in an interview, and that book has since gone on to become quite very invaluable, not only because it's the first signed, but because it bears her very earliest signature, which has changed tremendously. So, going through my, my signed books, we'll start with her earliest and work our way up through the latest. I actually don't have a 1997 J.K. Rowling signature yet. I've never had one. I have 1998s, however, and I'm very proud of those, as they're still quite rare and hard to find. So right here, I have a sixth print soft cover, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, published by Bloomsbury. It is actually the first to have this quote down here from the Sunday Telegraph. The first five prints of this book, the soft cover, had the Wendy Cooling quote, just FYI. And this one is signed on a Bloomsbury book plate. Isn't that awesome? To Jessica, I've got one of them at home. Best wishes, JK Rowling. And what's cool as you can see that it's got j.k.rolling. You can see these first signings just had a handful of people. That's it. So she got to sit and talk with them. She got to do dedications. So you'll find a lot more dedications, usually in the earlier books and then the later. I love how I always imagine when I see dedications, I always imagine the conversation that had to have taken place. And I can imagine the little girl smiling and just having the best time. Oh, it must have been purely magical, both for Joe and the little girl. You know, when this book was published, Joe is a struggling young mother. It's it's a wonderful fairy tale story about her as well. I really love how she references her daughter in this in this dedication. I think it's great. And this is a tenth print, first edition Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, published by Bloomsbury. It's book plate signed as well. You can see it right there. And I love that you can see like the J.K. rolling and it still has a really good W. It's a really good signature. Uh, you don't see that anymore. The W has since fallen out and of course there are no dots. It's just all one connected signature now. So it's really cool to see how it used to look, I think. The original owner of this book forgot his book when he went to the signing and Joe being Joe couldn't let him go home with nothing. So she signed a piece of paper and gave it to him and him or his mom put it in with glue and then sold it onward to me a few years later so I've hung on to it for about 10-11 you know, years somewhere in there I bought it shortly after I bought the first uh, to uh, Jessica signed or dedicated book uh, and I've loved it ever since and interestingly interestingly it has this gold badge that you don't see on the sixth print this is a first print first edition published by Bloomsbury Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets it's covered in mylar, so it's really reflective, so I apologize. And this one is a Bloomsbury book plate signed to Lauren with best wishes from J.K. Rowling. Um, it's an early signature as well, but there are no dots. They've since fallen out, but again, it still has a really good W, so that's still nice to see. You can, It's a really good, you can see the evolution of her signature from early 98 to later on when this book was uh, first published. <laughs> I forgot this was in here. So, before I decided I wanted to collect Harry Potter books many years ago, I collected screen-used Harry Potter props, and this is one of them. This is the, from the Gringotts scene with Harry and Hagrid when they walk up to the Gringotts bank for the first time. And this is a screen-used 
bank deposit slip from that scene where they're talking to the goblin. And I've since sold off most of my screen used props, but I still have a few around. And I stored this, I remember now I stored this with the Chamber of Secrets because it's in a really nice snug slip case and it keeps it nice and flat. And this is a super cool, I love this piece by the way. This is one of my favorite things. It is an early Bloomsbury box set. You can see it's just books one and two. Thomas Taylor cover art that you see from the Philosopher's Stone and the Cliff Wright that you see from the first edition Chamber of Secrets. And, and they're both signed in 98. Um, this is a fourth print, hardcover, Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, published by Bloomsbury, of course. Et voila! Isn't that signature lovely? It's one of my favorite ones, honestly. Uh, I feel very fortunate to have a set with both books signed. Isn't it lovely? These spend a lot of time put up in my safe just because I don't want anything to happen to them, but I really, I love them so much. I was so thrilled to get to own these. So I just wish I was the person who got them signed. I would love to own a book that I got signed from a JK Rowling signing. I just don't. To finish out my 98 signatures, I have this book. It's a first print, first edition, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone with the first day jacket, meaning it's got the JK Rowling on the spine and the guardian coat on the rear. And it was signed on her very first trip to the United States in 1998. And I can't believe that was 20 years ago. Isn't it wonderful? I bought this signed book a few years ago for my birthday. For me, to me, a wonderful present. And I've loved it ever since. I think the only way I would ever consider selling it is if I happen to find one in better condition and they're around, most definitely they're around, but if I were to find one in better condition, I may consider selling it, but I really have become attached to it, so it would be a hard sell anyway. So these three are some of my favorite signed books. They all go together because they're signed and dedicated to the same person. How cool is that? A little girl named Chloe as the chicken pox and I'm guessing her mother or maybe her father brother somebody got her these books I don't think she went maybe she did but I doubt it um, just because of the dedication on the philosopher's stone which is delightful dear Chloe I had the chicken pox last year I caught it from my daughter and it was horrible I hope you get well JK Rowling fun Keep the idea that JK was holding or that Joe had chicken pox as an adult that has to be awful. I've heard it's terrible, but I love the dedication for this book. And it's in the 24th print. <clears throat> First edition Philosopher's Stone. And here's a 14th print soft cover Chamber of Secrets to Chloe again. JK Rowling. Isn't that fun? And last, we have a 14th print hardcover as Caban. To Chloe yet again. Isn't that fantastic? One of the things that I do when I get signed books is I always imagine the conversation and I picture Chloe being at home. Maybe she went, but either way I imagine the conversation. I imagine Joe being just wonderful um, and I can just, these three books would make anybody feel better. I'm sure they did Chloe. I hope they did Chloe. I hope she enjoyed them to their fullest extent. I know I most certainly have and very very indebted to her for selling them onward. And this is very cool. I'm very fortunate to have it. It is a first print, first edition US, I know you can tell from the cover art, Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. It was signed sometime probably in 2003-ish, I'm guessing. I know it was signed in the UK. I know that because I bought it from a charity shop in the UK. This little girl's father, had brought in a lot of her stuff. He said that she didn't clean her room and he told her anything left on the floor was gonna get taken to a charity shop. Apparently this book was on the floor. It was auctioned off and I got to buy it. I will say 
books four through six U.S. are really hard to find signed. They, uh, Joe didn't come to the States for them. She did not hold signings for them in the U.S. So finding signed U.S. copies is really hard to find. They're really rare. Um, typically, if you see them signed on eBay or say them signed on eBay, they're going to be a forgery. I was very fortunate to run across this. I'm very thrilled to have it in my collection. And this is a first print, first edition Harry Potter and the Half-Blood Prince published by Bloomsbury. It has a wonderful Jason Carcroft cover art. I love the flames, aren't they pretty? Mm -hmm. And what's super cool is that even though it's book plate signed, book plate matches that of the cover art. Isn't that neat? Mm. Most of the signed half lip prints UK are going to have the book plates like this. Very few you're going to see hand signed just because there was a very, very, very small signing for that in the UK. I think it may have been invite only, could be wrong, but they're really hard to find regardless. So most of them, if they're signed, are going to have this book plate. Before I get to my two favorite pieces, I'm going to bring you the Galbraith books. So JK Rowling has a pen name, as I'm sure you know, and she has some signed books that she puts out for them. What I love about this one is that it has the JK Rowling hologram down here, Robert Galbraith's signature on this page, and I just love that. She got found out after she wrote her first book, Who's Calling, some reporter called out on Twitter, cat was out of the bag, so she had to admit it. Um, but there's actually a few Robert Galbraith books, Cuckoo's Calling, of course, that people thought was really Robert Galbraith, not J.K. Rowling. So, pretty awesome. I mean, people knew Robert Galbraith was a pin name, they just assumed it was a man. So, very clever. Um, this one is the U.S. edition of Career of Evil, and it's signed as well, that's why it's in this video, of course, and it's signed... It's signed to a tipped in page, meaning that it's an extra page bound into the book instead of an, a hologram. So what you'll find is in the unsigned books, the signed page here is missing. And I believe there are about 250 of these that were put out in the US. These two are my very favorite signed pieces in my collection. And they're just delightful. They're the Harry Potter and the Prisoner Azkaban uh, proof copy by Bloomsbury. They're very rare. There were about 300 total of the green and the purple copies made. I'll go into some of the differences in the later video. Just know that they're different. There's a reason for the colors. Um, I can only surmise, but I'm pretty sure I know what the reasonings are, at least some of them. Um, I don't know how many of each were printed. You've heard some people say 50 were of the purple were made. Uh, 250 of the green and then 150 of each equaling 300 in both cases. I don't know. I'm just happy to have them. This one I found a few years ago and it's book plate signed. Um, Bloomsbury book plate signed and I'm very I was thrilled. I jumped at it. I found it on abooks.com and I jumped at it. I had to buy it. Um, especially because of this guy. This guy I've had since 2011, 2012, and it is my, the favorite piece of my collection. I've built a lot of my collection around it. Um, when I very first started collecting Harry Potter books, I did the really rare books, the first edition, first print, signed, hard to find, unique, rare, all that stuff. And then I blossomed outwards and did translations and other things, Funko Pops, um, box sets, uh, variant, cover variants, all that kind of stuff. When I very first started, it was just you know, the top echelon of the Harry Potter stuff, the hardest to find, the hardest to get, the rarest, that kind of stuff. Because that's what I enjoy. At the end of the day, it's what I still really love. But I love it all. I love all the translations behind me. So anyway, back to this. This is the proof copy, or U.S., it's the advanced reader copy, is the U.S. version. But this is the Bloomsbury proof copy. It's the first one of the two of the green. The purple came first. It's flat signed to the dedication page. Signed in 1999, which is really cool. That's the year the book was published. I don't know how many signed purple proofs there are, but there's not that many purple proofs around, so there's not that many signed ones around either. So, again, I feel very fortunate to have it in my collection, and I've loved having it. It's one of my favorite things. A quick word about forgeries. 
forgeries are rampant in the marketplace because of how valuable Joe's signature has become over the years. So if you decide you want to collect JK Rowling signatures, you have to be really aware of what it is that you're buying. Do your research. I hope you've enjoyed looking at my sign books. I know I've certainly enjoyed playing with them. If you have any questions about JK Rowling signatures or Harry Potter collecting in general, you are welcome to put them in the comments below, send me an email through my website, or find me on Instagram. And if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and give it a like and give me a subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy collecting.